I've had a long-standing interest in late seventies, early eighties downtown New York art scene. It's an interest that I think has grown out of my love of the music of that period, the CBGB's bands such as the Ramones, Blondie, Talking Heads, Television. It's it's an interest which is also been fed via my love of the work of Lynn Tillman and Mary Gateskill, their novels and their short stories. Film-wise, a, a fantastic document of this particular period is Jim Jamush's Permanent Vacation, his debut feature. It's a film about a guy in New York who doesn't do much, really. He has a series of encounters, and then at the end of the film, he decides to leave the city. But the film works as a fantastic document of the period. The camera trails this main character around the city, and we see shot after shot of deserted streets, abandoned buildings, so on and so forth. It's, you really get a sense of what it must have been like to live in New York during this period. Film-wise as well, earlier this year I saw Born in Flames by Lizzie Borden, a film which, like Permanent Vacation, was was made around this time that I'm interested in. And it's it's a terrific, exciting, incendiary film. I thought it was fantastic. <coughs> and there was an article about Borden in a recent issue of Sight and Sound. And in the article, there were references made to a book called The Moving Pictures Generation with the subtitle the Cinematic Impulse in Downtown New York Art and Film by a writer called Vera Dika. References to the book, made, to my mind, made the book sound fantastic. So I got myself a copy and I've spent the past couple of weeks reading it and yes, I, I think it is a fantastic book. It's, it's about how the generation of that late 70s, early 80s generation of downtown New York visual artists were influenced by ideas of the cinematic. It Deeker explains that that generation were referred to as pictures artists. She says it was an art critic who I'd not heard of prior to reading the book called Douglas Crimp, who came up with this coinage, the pictures artists. Now, Deke doesn't go into too much detail regarding what, what this term means, um, so I, I wasn't 100% sure, but she explains that this generation, this late 70s, early 80s generation working in New York, one of the things which set them apart from their forerunners was that they returned to showing images of the full, complete, entire human body, whereas the generation which had preceded them had, had, insist, had preferred to show the body in a fragmented, partial way. The focus of Deeker's book is on movement and questions of time. She locates the essence of cinema, so the cinematic, in cinema's ability to explore movement and to explore time. In this, she seems very much to be following Deleuze. Deleuze is a name that crops up a lot in Deeker's book and checking the bibliography I see that it's written two books about cinema 
um, but both of which seem to deal with movement and time. Deeker's interest is, is to look at how the artists of this late 70s, early 80s generation have, have explored questions of movement and time. The shadow of Andy Warhol looms large in Deeker's book and for over the artist she's interested in. The structure of the book isn't isn't linear. Um, Deke uses Warhol's career, how he began making his screen tests and then moved to larger scale improvised films featuring a lot of bodies involved in New various improvisations before ending up in feature length plotted talking movies. Dick uses the structure of, of Warhol's career, the development of Warhol's career, rather, to provide a, the structure for a book. Um, the book is organized in a similar way. Start, it starts off looking at artists who focused on single faces or single bodies before moving to artists who who did feature length movies and then finishing with artists who, who who were interested interested in exploring the possibilities of narrative. The the work which Deka starts with is is a short film called The Jump by an artist called Jack Goldstein. The Jump is is a short film and it features a repeated image of someone falling and then going through a cycle of the fall and then it loops back so the character goes through the fall a second time, loops back, goes through the fall a third time, on and on and on and on. It's 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 a film of a figure caught in a perpetual fall or jump. And Dick credits this work with been a particularly important one to, for, as far as the artists that would follow Goldstein were concerned. She says it's important because it's a film which promises narrative and then refuses to fulfil that promise. The, it, the second reason is because the film shows the full, the whole body and the third reason is because Deke says the film breaks movement down into a series of moments and shows to the view that movement is not a continuous, smooth process. It's a series of connected moments. The second artist that Deke looks at in the first section of a book is a female artist called Vivian Dick. Dick made a series of film portraits featuring female talking heads, either people talking autobiographically about their own lives and art practice or females in character. Deke says that these films of Dick's are, to a certain extent, attempts to reverse the dynamic that Warhol was exploring when he made his screen tests. Dick's films follow a similar um, Dick's films resemble Warhol's screen tests to, to a certain extent but with Warhol's films, it was very much a case of 
Warhol being in charge, Warhol exercising power over his subjects, Warhol often being extremely and obviously manipulative of his subjects. Deke reverses this by pr- making her films a safe space, a safe, open space for f- women to talk about whatever interests them. Um, the f- Dick's films sound brilliant. Deke makes them sound brilliant and there are a few available on youtube to watch and though i've not had a chance to watch them myself yet i certainly do intend to watch them soon and i will i would encourage everyone else to do the same as i say but based based on my reading of them in the book they do sound great Deke talks as well about the importance of community to this generation of artists, how they all acted in each other's films, how they work together, how they learn shared skills from each other. Importance in this respect is a photographer, Nan Golding, who Deke shows, shows that Golding's work emerged from the community that that she was a, a part of, the community wherein she lived. She also talks a lot, Deke also talks a lot about the photographer Cindy Sherman and Sherman's interest in the cinematic. The obvious one there, which, which Deke refers to repeatedly is Sherman's series of photographs, untitled film stills. Deke talks as well about how a bunch of these artists, Cindy Sherman included, began to get interested in trying their ideas out in a mainstream context. She looks at the horror film, the this, this, this slasher movie that Sherman made called Office Killer, and she she pays particular attention to the to the work of Lizzie Borden and Catherine Bigelow. Borden made certain inroads into the mainstream, albeit limited inroads. But Bigelow is someone who's obviously had a tremendous amount of mainstream success, winning two Oscars. The book really is a terrific book. Uh, I have no hesitation in recommending it to anyone, anyone interested in this specific period, anyone interested in art, anyone interested in cinema. Reading it, I was finding myself stopping every couple of pages, trying to find the films mentioned either on YouTube or Amazon. And more importantly than that, it 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 inspired me. It made me want to make art. It made me want to make sculpture, something I've never attempted in my life. It made me want to make films. It also... Weirdly, or or no, I don't know. It made me wish I could find a time machine somewhere, or build a time machine, and move to New York in the late seventies, early eighties.